Okay, a couple of things first of all before, I, before we do the ascendance is that um, I do a lot of uh, horoscopes of nations because it's, it's easy to find out when a nation comes into existence. Some nations it's really easy. Others who have been around for thousands of years it's not so easy. Like many, many countries in this planet of ours came into existence on the 1st of January. So when you find a country like Australia declared its independence and became a nation on the 1st of January. So when you find nations that are born on the 1st, and I hear what Richard's saying about how, how this leads to independence, and that speaks fine. But then you find countries like the US of A, which came into existence on the 4th of July. And America has yet to fulfill its promise when it comes to doing as opposed to talking. It will in the future, I'm sure. And the other thing I want to comment on is someone came up to me at the break and said, yeah, I was born the same day as someone famous. And does, do astrological twins matter? There's a couple of correlations here. There's, there's three examples I'm going to give you. Uh, Lenny Henry was born the same day, same year, and when you adjust the time zones, the same hour as Michael Jackson. And if anyone is old enough to remember Lenny Henry doing the Thriller video for Comic Relief about 25 years ago, you'd have seen how good he was. You understand the similarity. Uh, Mark Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker, was born the same day, same year, same hospital, same hour as Christopher Reeve, who played Superman. And Sylvester Stallone was born the same day, same year, same hospital, same 20 minutes as G.W. Bush. One of them's a mad cowboy actor who's trying to save the world from terrorists. The other one's a, an actor, yeah. Uh, <laughs> astrological twins do work, but they're all different. Anyway. When Richard was talking, I was, I was listening to him and I was thinking, yeah, these numbers, they bear certain relations to certain characteristics of individual ascendants. What do I mean by the ascendant? Let me define it in a different way. The planets in the heavens, they're lumps of rock or balls of gas that orbit in a certain pattern in a way that is not random, I assure you. And they influence us by creating patterns which we, we react to or we react to. Acting is better than reacting. But beyond that, there's four very important points in astrology. There's the sun, the moon, the ascendant or rising sign, as it's sometimes known, and the midheaven. Now, the sun represents your core, your soul, your heart, the part of you that is absolutely unique, unaffectable, and untouchable by anyone else under any circumstances whatsoever. So when you see people who have got, they might be a Leo, but they've got four planets in Cancer and three planets in Virgo and only the sun in Leo, and they feel nothing like a Leo, but they're a Leo, you understand why they feel disaffected. They've only got the sun in one sign. The moon reflects the light of the sun onto the earth. So the moon reflects the light of the sun out of the individual. The sign and the house of the moon in your horoscope shows the way that you express your feelings and emotions. It's not the way you are, but it's the way you express yourself at an emotive and feeling full level. The ascendant the sign of the zodiac that is rising on the horizon, on the eastern horizon, at the moment of your birth, the ascendant is the armour you put on as you go outside the front door. It is not the way you are, but it is the way you are seen as being at the day-by-day -day level. The way you interact with the world at the minute-by-minute -minute level. The midheaven, the middle of the heavens, the highest point of the sun's orbit at the moment of your birth, the most visible point of the sun's orbit at the time of your birth, 
This is the public image. The way you project, promote, advertise and sell yourself as being. The way you want the world to see you as being. It's not the way you are, it's the way you want the world to see. It's the way you market yourself. So the sun is your identity, the moon is your feelings, the ascendant is your armour and the way you interact with the world, and the midheaven is your public image. It's very easy and very boring to give character definitions according to individual sun signs. Everyone knows their sun sign. You can read it in the bloody Daily Mail. Or the Daily Nazi, as I like to call it. The ascendant or rising sign is a very different feature. It shows how you interact with the world at the minute-by-minute -minute level. It shows the way you engage with the world. Now, the thing about the ascendant is that it often, not always, but often, is demonstrated by the physical appearance. So, because we live in a country that's relatively quite far north, 51, 52 degrees north, because of the, I'm not going to go into the mechanics of it, but because the Earth is tilted at 23 degrees, if you're born on the equator, then each sign takes two hours to come up on the horizon. If you're born around the latitude of Britain, then certain signs come up a lot longer than others. For example, Virgo and Libra take nearly three hours to come up on the horizon each day in the UK, whereas Pisces and Aries only take 45 to 50 minutes. In New Zealand, it's the opposite effect. Aries and Pisces are much more common on the ascendant. Virgo and Libra are much rarer, which is why in this country, only one in 25 people have Pisces, Aquarius, Aries, Taurus rising, whereas one in seven have Virgo, Libra, Scorpio or Leo rising. It's much easier to recognize people by their ascendant rather than their sun sign. And the classic, the classic trap that astrologers fall into is when people come up to them and go, go on then, guess my sun sign. And you get it, and you guess it, and they go, no, you're wrong, and what you've guessed is their ascendant because of the way they look. So here's a guide to how each ascendant expresses itself in terms of appearance, but also demonstrates itself in the outside world. Aries rising, remember there's, there's relatively few of these, they always have the high eyebrow line, the arched eye, the round, the eye socket is very round and there's a strong high eyebrow socket that, that looks like the goat's horns, the ram's horns. And Aries rising is always characterized by having a strong forehead and often a few scars and bumps on the head as well because of their consistent head banging and diving in head first because that is a feature of Aries rising. Taurus rising is normally characterized by having a strong neck. The, the neck will not just be straight and narrow, but it'll be extending into the shoulders. And there's normally a big, strong shoulders as well. Think of the bull. And then you've got Taurus rising. And Taurus rising, people are characterized by their, not necessarily their possessiveness, but their attention to detail around value systems. What are things worth? What is the value of this? Is this important to me or not? Gemini rising people often have very long, thin, slippery necks. It's to accommodate that slippery tongue. You know, they're very good at talking, very good with media, very fast thinking. They never stop to think how they feel. They're too busy talking and imagining and creating and, and communicating. So when I hear Richard talk about how number three is the sign of communication. I think, well, Gemini is the third sign, and Gemini rising people, they're like hamsters on a wheel. You know, they never stop thinking. It's a non-stop verbal diarrhea with Gemini rising, and they can talk for Britain. Um, they can talk for any country. But when they stop to analyze and go belief, the superficial mental chitter chatter, and look for a deeper meaning or a higher philosophy, then often they have to stop and get, go and step back into their corner a little bit. Cancer rising people often have the full moon face. They often have quite a round face. Not always, but often. Um, and it's 
It's one of those faces that's always smiling with big chubby cheeks and it's a round circular face. But Cancer Rising always they seem to be easily affected by their environment and they can switch moods just like that. One wrong look, one wrong word, especially first thing in the morning, that's it, they're in a bad mood. And if Cancer Rising is an intelligent person, then they've got the strength to turn round to the people around them and say, look, I'm in a bad mood, leave me alone. Give me five minutes and I'll be all right. If you don't, I'll be like this all day. And, and yeah, it's very sensitive to environment. And of course, cancer rising people value home. Not house, apartment, condominium, palace, bed, sit, tent, home. And the really intelligent ones know that home starts in here. And they can't find it out there till they've got it in here. Leo rising, you can spot a mile off. They've all got big hair and they always dress up before they go out because if they look good, they feel good. Outer image counts. And it's not that they're arrogant or conceited. Well, the lower evolved ones are, but the more higher evolved are proud. Pride in oneself is not a negative attribute. It is a positive quality because if you exude pride, if you know you're good, then you influence the world around you. So Leo rising, they'll always dress in the, they'll either have big hair or very nicely groomed hair because the lion's mane, or they'll dress in gold, orange, yellow, the bold colors. Virgo rising, the analysts. I have Virgo rising. Virgo, Virgo rising is never satisfied. More Virgo risings like me bite their nails than any other sign in the zodiac. In fact, the rest of the zodiac put together because there's this perfectionist streak around Virgo rising. And there's always a kind of worried and hurried look as if they, they're always being hustled about something and they can never quite get it right and it's never going to be good enough. So Virgo rising, they need to actually say, look, I'm doing my best. And if that's not good enough, there's the door. But a lot of Virgo Risings go through complexes in their life where they just feel persecuted because they're not being good enough. And it's actually themselves who do that persecution. So you're always doing your best. 98% is good enough, because if you had 100%, you'd have wings on your back. Libra Rising people, you can normally spot quite easily because they often have the lip, the lower lip that protrudes down a bit, or they have a line in a horizontal line in between the lower lip and the jaw, or they have a vertical line in the middle of the jaw. This is the, the balance, the split point, because Libra rising people are the archetypal Librans in that they find it difficult to decide things. They can't make their mind up, and these physical features often show the, the dichotomy, the split personality. It's not split as in as in schizophrenic or something like that. But it is that they see both sides. And Libra rising people, they make the best arbitrators, referees, adjudicators, analysts. But at the same time, they like to keep everybody on board. Scorpio rising people have the penetrating eyesight, the gaze, the stare. If you're dealing with someone with Scorpio rising and they, they turn their stare on you, then you either tell them the absolute truth or you run because that gaze can actually burn through solid steel. And the thing is, the Scorpio rising doesn't realize they're doing it. They might be a nice gentle Cancerian or a placid Pisces, but they've got Scorpio rising and they turn that gaze on you and you think, oh, I'm on dodgy ground here. Um, the Scorpio rising people does deal with absolutes. They can deal with no, they can deal with rejection. They can also deal with yes, but they don't deal with, I don't know, I can't deal with it, I'm, I'm not sure. That's, that's anathema to them. They will cut you dead rather than deal with indecision. Sagittarius rising people, they've got high foreheads and they normally bounce when they walk. You see these people walking along the street and they, each time they take a step, they bounce. They've got Sag rising because they bounce. Sagittarian people, Sagittarius rising people, they've normally got a somewhat irresponsible sense of humor about them that makes them naturally optimistic, 
or the complete opposite, a complete sort of down and out, but most of the time positive and optimistic. And Sagittarius rising people, they love humor, they love travel, they want their philosophies to be the guideline for the future. Capricorn rising people also have high foreheads, but often a very high hairline. These are the people whose hair will start halfway up their head, regardless of how old they are or what gender they are. And they're the people who have very high cheekbones. You see a lot of these people with very thin cheeks and high cheekbones, Capricorn rising every time. And these are the people who always will have pronounced bone structures, strong teeth, strong jaw, angular elbows. Capricorn rising, they always have sharp elbows. Great for jumble cells. Um, Aquarius rising, this is almost always the case. Aquarius rising people have almond shaped eyes. Aquarius rising people, they epitomize Aquarius. They're always interested in the unusual, the different, the odd, the innovative, the original, the futuristic. They're not so much interested in the conformity of the normal. And they always have eyes that have got one quarter of the eye socket is straight, creating an oriental or an almond shaped eyes. Pisces rising people, um, it's a bit of a weird one because half of them have these sort of hang dog, please don't pick on me, impersonation where they, they just sort of, you see them kind of shrivel up. Yet Pisces rising are the most intuitive, uh, empathic, compassionate, sensual and sensitive signs of the zodiac. But they also got this fear of being persecuted. And Pisces rising, they're the people with the big eyes, the big wide open eyes, wide open to everything. But you look at them and think they could burst into tears at any moment. And, and they're quite common in this country, uh, quite rare in this country. I often joke with my colleagues in Australia that the reason Australia's got so many Pisces rising and Aries rising is because Australia's got so many headbangers and alcoholics. Whereas they say to me, yeah, England's got all Virgo rising and Libra rising, which is why you can't make your mind up and you're all so anal. Um, but there's, there's, there's an element of truth in it all. Please remember when you're dealing with the ascendant and the rising sign. Well, the, the rising sign is the sign of the zodiac that is rising on the eastern horizon at the moment that you were born. The ascendant is the degree of that sign that is rising. The ascendant is actually one degree. The sign, the rising sign is the whole sign. They are one and the same thing. One is more specific than the other. The midheaven is a different case. The midheaven is the public image. It's the way you project yourself and that's a different ball game. And it's always going to be approximately three signs away from the ascendant. I'm not gonna go into the, into the midheaven now. At this point, let me throw it open. Any questions on the ascendant? The, as I said, the rising sign is the sign that is coming up on the horizon. The ascendant is the degree of that sign that is coming up. And that degree is similar to a planet in that aspects to that degree will influence the way that you deal with the outside world and the way the outside world deals with you. For example, if you have planets opposite the ascendant, opposite the ascending degree, then if the ascendant is the relationship you have with yourself, then the descendant, the point that's setting on the opposite horizon, on the western horizon, is the relationship you have with other, whether that is personal and intimate, friends, social or professional. So if you're born around sunset, then your life is going to be very much centered around relationships. Whereas if you're born around sunrise, it's going to be very much centered around the relationship you have with yourself, if that helps. The ascendant is always the start 
of the first house. The houses of the zodiac, numbered 1 to 12. Planets are energies. The signs of the zodiac that the planets are in at the time of your birth show the way that those energies manifest in and through you, the way you behave. The houses of the zodiac show the way that the outside world sees you as behaving. It's the way you demonstrate that behavior into the outside world. The aspects between planets show how individual energies help and hinder each other at the day-by-day -day level. So there's, there's planets, signs, houses, and aspects. And it's possible to do a horoscope without putting planets in signs or without putting planets in houses, just looking at the aspects, because the aspects are the real behavior indicators. And the signs and the houses are the decoration, if you like. But it's, uh, every house has its different meaning relating to the sign, like the first house relates to Aries, the seventh house relates to the seventh sign of Libra, the tenth house relates to the tenth sign of Capricorn. And as when Richard was talking, I was listening and I was thinking there's so many similarities here between the numero numerological patterns and the astrological patterns. And I definitely think there's, a, there's an interplay and an overlay here between the two. And uh, this, is a, this is a great field of work for, for future development, I think. And I'd love to do some work on this in the future. Any more questions? Um, that's a really good question. <sighs> I'd have to say yes. The ascendant is a lot more dominant in the first 28, 29 years of life, until the Saturn return, age 29, because I often, f I believe, I, I experience through my readings that people don't really know themselves properly until they've reached the Saturn return at age 29. So they're dealing with the outside world in a kind of experiential way. So they're dealing with it through their ascendant rather through their sun sign. Once they're 29, 30 and they've been through the Saturn return, then they can look in the mirror and go, right, I know who I am now, or at least I've got an idea. Let's start being me, at which point the sun sign kicks in. Good question, though. I had to think about that one. Nice one. Anyone else, please? Right, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs>